I think there are faces that probably I see today, but the majority, I have already seen you. <laughs> you are already my sisters, and I'm really grateful I have such a big number of sisters. So, before I start, the topic is be strong and of a good courage. I think I have to talk about my family. Because we are here, we have been here on earth to be in families and to help families grow. Now, in my talk, I will be just referring to the four points that you see here. After my family, I will talk a little bit about the background of the, the um, what we are living today. And then I will talk about the life as a woman. I think you'll be interested because you are women. <laughs> of course, in parallel to the life of as a woman, I have a profession back home. I was working as a teacher. Oh. And then I would say a little bit about how my family has been rescued and has been able to arrive here. So, this is my family. You can ask me, where are you? I'm not in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a picture that I like so much. I was not at home. I was not in Burundi. I was in here in the U.S., not in Sarah City, but in another part of the U.S. I was on a training. And this picture was taken in 2013 when my last born, let me see, this one is the one you see now, he's ta the tallest. <laughs> but here he was 12. He was 12, and now he's 15. So, of course, some have seen Charles. He's already here. This is our son who is today in Russia studying medicine. And he's been there from 2010 means the last time I have seen him was in 2010. Now, this guy is here. His name is Ranger. He's in SUU. He's studying. And this is my daughter who is in India. She's studying computer science. And that's the year, 2013, that's the year I have seen her. It means it's three years. You see that it would not be easy, I mean, difficult for her to serve, to go on a mission. That's three years. And I think the ladies just do 18 months. So it will be easy for her if she's, she accepts because she's not yet a member of the church. She's what? She's, she's not, not a yet member. a member. And what is she doing in India? She's studying. A she is <laughs> in a college. Oh, okay. And thank you, sister. Feel free to interrupt me anytime. <laughs> I like this. I like, yes. Some of us work here for your Relief Society, anything, so feel free to repeat yourself. <laughs> yes. Okay. No. Yes. yes. Okay. I think in what I say, probably those who are there can say, can you say this again? <laughs> because I may not just remember that I have said it or not. That's fine. <laughs> okay? So thank you. Interrupt me anytime. I want it to be a kind of conversation. Yes. It's not tell a lecture. Them, tell them that she's graduating and we're trying to get her here at SU. Yes, Good my question. daughter who is in India has already the paperwork almost done. She's waiting for having an interview next week, next next Wednesday. Oh. She will have an interview, please your prayers, because she, we want her to come and join us here. Now tell us For about her graduate program. She, 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 yes. yes. The one in Russia. But the one in Russia still has one year to go. Oh, he's going to school there. Yes, medical school. Medical oh, school. Wow. She, he will be a doctor. Yes. And he's 26. It's he's 26, okay? There is a funny picture here. What about the, this, the other oh, son? Yeah, tell us about all of them. Yeah, the son. Billy. 
I'm Billy. You're making sure to pay attention. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. This one? Right about Billy. Yes. Billy is, is now going to be a senior in high school. school. Yes. Okay. He's old. He's 19. But he's shorter than Jody. Yes. <laughs> Today. <laughs> do they play sports? Yeah, they do. They, they, they play sports. Sports in high school. Uh, yes. Jody was the tallest, plays basketball. Oh, yeah. And uh, Billy is trying to play soccer if he has the opportunity and uh, volleyball I have heard there is no volleyball in high school he prefers to volleyball to soccer okay so I said the funny picture we were lucky to find all the people laughing <laughs> it's, it's when they it's just a joke when Charles is told, please smile, we're going to take her picture. He says, I have no tea. <laughs> but this time we are lucky to have them. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> the country of Burundi now. Yes. Uh, it's the little country you see here. Oh, Very little one. Rwanda is north. Tanzania is south and east. The Republic Democratic of Congo is west. It's just a very little country. It's somewhere here. <laughs> very tiny. So, I just want to give you an idea of the historical background of the two countries Rwanda and Burundi, because we share the same history. As you see, I have just tried to mark some dates. In both countries, two main ethnic groups, Hutu and Tutsi. Before independence, we were kingdoms. Kings were ruling those two countries. After independence, which means we were colonized by Belgium, we were independent in 1961. The time the Belgians were there, they introduced a kind of division between the population, telling Hutu, you are the majority, you are the ones to rule, but they were not the ones ruling. So the Hutu started kind of revolting. And in 59, in Rwanda, the Hutu were able to cause these Tutsis go away, they killed them. There was the first genocide in 51, in 59. 1959. Yes, 1959. Many of the Tutsis left Rwanda. When they left Rwanda, the majority came in Burundi. Because in Burundi, Tutsis were leading. They were what? They, they were, were the leaders. leaders. <coughs> now, you see a bunch of dates that I have listed. Those are the years that Hutus in Burundi were trying to take the power, killings, but Tutsis resisted. They resisted in 65, 72, 88, 91. And then in 92, the president who was ruling the country introduced the multi-political parties. Then elections of many parties took place in 93. Ehutu won the elections. The majority now is going to rule. We thought we were going to have peace. But that president, I will just explain and explain and forget about the moving of the slides anyway. <laughs> that president who was elected 
in June 1993 was assassinated three months after. Mm -hmm. wow. Three months only. And then the Hutu said, okay, you Tutsis, you don't want to be ruled by a Hutu, so you, you'd better die. You are good to die. 93 started a genocide all over Burundi. A civil war which lasted for 10 years. 10 years. So I'll be back to this because I'll be mentioning the period of time I've been living in the civil war from 93 up to 2003. So be strong. <laughs> be strong with good courage. Yes, ma'am. So are you a Hutu or a Tutsi? I am a Tutsi. Tutsi. Tutsi from the minority. Yes. So you really had to escape. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay, so we have to be strong. We start with our home. So I got married 89. That was in September. But just three weeks after, my husband left. Anyone is married to a military? No. It's hard to live with militaries. They are never home. Never. And I had some questions from my friends saying, we don't see your husband, but you are having children. Well, wedding night. How did that happen? That happened to me. Um, <laughs> my, my husband did everything he could to avoid getting drafted to go to Vietnam, uh -huh. including getting me pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, really get to see our daughter until she was four months old. That was something that was very hard. Particularly the particular time spending three weeks, ladies, you know, when you you are newly married and then three weeks after your husband said, I'm leaving you alone. Uh, but said, he didn't want to leave. He didn't want, but it was a scholarship. Oh, I he see. had to oh. come and study in the US, and he had to stay for two years. Oh, I, I started telling him, can't you give back this house? <laughs> <laughs> and then I can go back home. How can I come every day, struggle with, with cooks? Because at home we had cooks staying, preparing food. So am I going to be running, coming home to eat and be talking to the cook? No. <laughs> I said, give this house back to the people and then I will go back home and stay until you are back. Yeah. And he said, no, <laughs> we have to stay. And then he brings his sister, who was my sister-in-law, and we stayed together. At oh. least I said, I will have someone to talk to, and not to the cook. <laughs> now, the very first challenge in my life as a woman was to give birth to the first child alone, being alone. Mm. I suppose you have. You have the experience. Giving birth to a first child is not something that you can tell anyone except the one who has lived in the situation. So, my first son was born. As we were going through difficult situations, this started in 91. 91, my husband was back. I was just kind of celebrating, but sometimes you can pray. You cannot fear to face the dangers 
because our Heavenly Father can help us. The fears are there, we have to face them, and we have to see how to get out of them. Now, what did I face that time? In 91, the capital city was attacked. 91, whereas I was just saying, he is back, so we're going to be living together. He has to go to work and stay for many days. Now, that year, 91, my mother passed away. The day we were going to my, my dad's home just to get things fixed, a truck bumped into our car and it bumped on the side where I was sitting. Mm. And I said, okay, mom, I love you, but I don't want to go with you. <laughs> no. I just cried and said, no. I know that I love you, but no. we don't have to go together. <laughs> Let me just stay alive. The car was really damaged, but I was safe. Then I said, that's okay. At least I continue to live. That was the, the very, the second, because the first one, I've told you what was the first one. Now, challenging time of this period of time, 93 up to 2003. The events have been following one after another. June, we had the elections. Some eight days before the coup, my father died. Now, the very day the president was assassinated, we had been in a place preparing for a kind of set ceremony that we do a week after someone has died. We were out just preparing for the ceremony. And then when we got home, it was around midnight. I saw my husband answering a call. And I said, what was that? And he said, I had to go to work. Mm. To work at midnight? He said yes, and the place where we were we were living was a new place. I couldn't, as I'm just saying, okay, I couldn't reach the, the the entrance door, and I was the one to go and open for him so that he could drive. I had to take a small kinds of chair just to help me to step on it so that yeah. I can reach the place just to open and then lock again was after midnight. Then I did that, but no one else in the house knew what was happening. And some 30 minutes after, bombs, shootings, we started really to hear terrible noise that night. And then I thought, all the lights have to be switched off so that no, if someone is outside, couldn't see me. I tried to compose the number to call the office where Charles has gone, and then I composed the wrong number after midnight. The person who just answered the call said, guys, how can you continue to disturb me? Probably it was a number which was close to the, yeah, the real office, the real number. And then I said, okay, I'm sorry. Then I said, I had no choice. I, had, I have to switch on the light so that I could compose the right number and at least know where Charles was. And I composed the right number. I got someone to reply and who promised to tell him to call back home. When he called, he said, it's a military coup and the president and some other high personalities were killed. Mm. Then I said, so what? <coughs> That's the time all the people of his ethnic group started the genocide of 1993. 
and then that was the war which lasted for 10 years. So, courage is simply the willingness to be afraid and act anyway. My sisters, there are moments that whenever you try to forget, they cannot leave your mind. In 1995, I was at home with my, my daughter. She was one year. The two first were at school in the kindergarten. At 11.30, the rebels attacked the quarter where we were living because the houses were mostly of militaries and they wanted to kill families of militaries. Mm. And <clears throat> when I heard that shootings were coming nearer and nearer, I first thought about my two boys who were about to come home because that was the hour the kids have to come home. I had to find a solution for those and of course for mine because I was alone at home with my, my baby girl. I called someone, I delegated <coughs> sorry, <coughs> him to go to take the kids and to take them to another place. That was done. Now, I checked the back door and the front door, I locked them, then I ran into my room. The time I was running in my room, I saw five, five armed men in the backyard. When I saw them, I just started thinking they may even come through the roof and come down in the house. Then I said, okay, what am I going to do now? I'm in the room, the door is locked. Then I had the courage of taking the land phone into a wardrobe, into my wardrobe. I, I stood in the wardrobe trying to breastfeed my baby so that she could not cry. Then I said, okay, I, I stay here. I continue to call the numbers that I remembered just to ask for help. And at 1 p.m., imagine to be in a wardrobe at 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. staying there for an hour. Then at 1 p.m. I heard some voices calling, please come back, come, come out. We are here. There is no one around your house. Then I was able to, to come. Of course, it's sweating because <laughs> there was no air inside the wardrobe. It was a real, real problem. And then, there are of course some small moments that happened, but in 2003, the capital city was attacked. There are some mountains over the capital city and the rebels were in those mountains. Then they were throwing bombs oh, yeah. on the capital city. <clears throat> and then, I was with 10 persons in my home, 10. My five children, my sister and his two children, her two children, and my sister-in-law who was still in my home. So I started just thinking, and in the meantime, Charles is somewhere protecting others. He said, why can't you come and protect us? He was not appointed to work in the capital city. He was in the countryside. But I said, okay, I'm the one to take over, to show to all these people that I'm able to protect them. The first thing was to pray. I said, okay, kneel down. Everyone, we have to pray. And once we finished to pray, I just remembered there was a toy gun in my room, a big one. <laughs> then I said, okay, this is the gun that Heavenly Father just sends us. <laughs> Your prayers are answered. So I will protect you. 
and then I took mattress, mattress, I arranged them on the floor under the tables and I make sure I group them by threes so that if the bomb comes to hit a part of the house, at least not everyone is, is just reached. Mm -hmm. I arranged them in different places and then I tell them, okay, sleep guys, I'm here <laughs> to protect you. But you know what? Inside me, I heard really a movement. I have to run every time to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It was turning and turning, but I couldn't tell anyone that I was scared. I was able to manage the night until the morning. Oh. Mm. I think you can have a look at this. I was. I was in the right hand of Heavenly Father. I really do believe that every action that we do, we have always to remember that we are protected, very protected. Any comment? Any question? Um, were you yes. a member of the church at the time? Or? No, no, no I wasn't Catholic. Was yes. Very yes. Yes. yes, I was a Catholic, but we oh. really yeah. pray in the same way. We pray one God. We believe in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I was comfortable with everything that yeah. was done like prayer. Yes. Now, despite the situation that we were living, we were able to be creative. Sometimes if you just be overwhelmed and then say, I just sit there and wait for the day to arrive and to die, you die before. Mm -hmm. you have the day you have to die. So these are the things that I was able to do, even if we were in a place, in a time, which was very difficult. So the first school, the first school that you see here, it was a, just a private, which was implemented by teachers. We were able to put together just a little money and start the school, just preparing for our retirement. And this is a center where we teach languages, French, English, Swahili, even Kirundi. So it's a place where we used to go in the evening and of course meet friends and forget about these shootings, forget about this situation. Yes, we, we were able to, to change and sometimes relax. Otherwise, it's not good to be always thinking about bad things. It's just a change. And at this school, the very school, this last one, it's a, a, in the countryside, the place where I was born, that I was trying to help. Fortunately, it still continues today. I was able to hand it over to my brother, and the school is now operating. And one week ago, I heard that it, it has been certified it's on the list of schools in the country, which is really very good. So these are times that we have to forget about shootings and be able to, to move on. Now, the plan, the plan, there is always a plan. Heavenly Father knows us, knows us, and he's the one to hold our future. While I thought I was old, that I couldn't go back to school, <laughs> I went back to school. And what I have noticed, dear sisters, is that something you say aloud, you say it aloud, you say a wish aloud, someday it may be, it may happen. Because in uh, and I was reminded of this by my son Landry. 
One day I, I said, she, he stoned me, I didn't even remember. I said, once my last son goes to middle school, then I will go back to school. That was back in 2007. And I said, I said it aloud, and then in 2012, I applied for a program. The program has to take place in 2013, and I heard from the ones who were selecting the people to attend that we were more than 100 to apply, and there were two to be selected. That's why I say it's really a plan. And my friends were saying, how can you go to study when you are 50? He said, I'm just happy to be 50, and I will go back to school. So that really was, it was done probably because of the support of my husband. My husband really was encouraging me to, to attend the program. Then I said, okay, I've been raising these kids for yeah. 25 or 21 without you. Now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> that has been his turn. Yes, I said, okay, since you, you insist and say, go, okay, I go. <laughs> but fortunately, it's just fortunately for him, they were already grown up. <laughs> yes, they can cook. Yes, cook and do anything. Do their laundry. Yes. So, but because it was his first time to raise them, I love him. I couldn't tell him stay with the two years old. No, that was twelve, and that was okay for him. So I joined the program. I know so much this citation, it, it's very deep for me. Because whenever we pray, sometimes we wonder if our prayers are really heard. But make sure they are heard. Of course, we cannot wait always to be answered by yes, and if you are answered by no, know that it's the will of the Lord. I say this because the same year, I was praying and praying for Charles to have a rank which has to move up him to a general. The answer was no. And I was sad, very sad. But I didn't know it was because the Lord didn't want him to be involved in this mess. Because all the generals who, who were still active, they have been killed. They have been jailed. They are in places that we don't know. Because they were suspected to be in the coup which took place last year. He was home. Of course, I was sad to see him home without a job. Yeah. But when I saw what happened to his colleagues, then I say, oh, the no answer now is positive. Yes. Well, <clears throat> here in Cedar City, we were wondering if God doesn't give us what we want it's because he's busy yes. giving us what we need. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So this is then. <clears throat> The year, which on one side was good because I was able to come and join the program, but the time I was on the program, Charles tells me I'm no more going to work. I have retired. I say, no, <laughs> he retired at the end of 2013. Yes, I came in June 2013, and he retired in December 2013. The wife is not there, the job is gone. Imagine. That was hard for him. But you know the is it every cloud has yes. 
he had time to be busy at home. He was not going to work. He was not going to work, which means that was the positive side of retiring. <laughs> I don't know if you will just state it as I do. <laughs> okay, so this is the place I arrived first when I was on the program because before coming to Penn State, I was in UC Davis. I stayed for two months and then that's my friend from, uh, where from? Somewhere. Swaziland. A, a country, an African country. We were very close. And sometimes, you see how she is and how I am. The friends were calling her my name. Uh -huh. Every time. And they said, so, what will be the name for her since you take her name and you give it to me? It was a very strong connection for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we had this little girl. This also something that really was a kind of, uh, in, I really included it in the plan. Her name is Samantha. When I saw her, I saw my daughter. Even if she was small, mm -hmm. I saw my daughter and her mother was my host. Mm -hmm. When I just start connecting things, I said, I have a host mother, in the program we call them host families. The host mother has a daughter. The name is, I mean, the same name is the name of my, my daughter. And when we were conversing, I heard the, the date she was born was the date we got married. <laughs> I just said, what's that? It's the beginning of miracles that I cannot explain. So, I came to Penn State. I was hosted by David and Shalom Levitt. Oh. They are the ones to have introduced me to the Church of Jesus Christ of Mary the Saints. And they just got to me when I had a kind of thirst that I could not really explain because the time I was in UC Davis, California, in the two months, I didn't go to church. I didn't find a church to go to. I lived on campus. Whereas I was used to go to church, not only every Sunday, because in the Catholic church, you can go to church every day. Every morning, there is a sacrament meeting. And if you live near the church, you can go to church every morning before you go to work. So that kind of interruption, stopping for two months, I felt something on my mind. And when I was asked, what can we do for you? I said, I need a place to go to church. He said, okay, let's try it. <laughs> just come and see. If you are not satisfied, then we can just look for another place and then we'll take you to church. Then that's the time I just started visiting. I had a book that I brought from home that I used to read instead of going to church. Then when I read, I just found some citations, quotations, and I, then I went back to my book. Oh, it's the same. I saw it's the same. So I said, okay, I stay. <laughs> I stayed. And then when I stayed, of course, the first step was to be baptized. <laughs> I was baptized in uh, January, January 2014. Yeah. Of course, you know, uh, it take time. I started to go in August. Then I was baptized in January. Did I take long? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> it depends. 
<laughs> Those who are not brought, born, who are covered, can tell if it's short or if it's long. It took me that time. Then I was baptized in uh, January. Those are the sisters who were teaching me. And here we have David and Shalom and their last son, Ava. So we were really happy. I was very happy that day. Now, of course, after the baptism, it's just trying to go to the temple and imagine that they left Penn State. I had an internship in Washington, D.C. I stayed for six weeks, but they left Penn State, State College. They came up to D.C. to take me to the temple. Hmm. They were the ones to take me to the temple. And <clears throat> surprisingly, the lady I was staying with in, in Washington, D.C. was also a member of the church, and they were the ones to connect me to the family. The lady was able to take me to the patriarch, to have the patriarchal blessings. Mm -hmm. I, and, and amazingly, the date, the date, 3rd June, that's the date I had my first child. Mm -hmm. And then I try again. I'm kind of a person who tries to see things that mm -hmm. are connecting. <laughs> what? Why? Question? Did you just do baptisms for the dad? Or did you yes. I was baptized for my mother and my grandmother. Oh, you remember the one who wanted to go with me? <laughs> 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 so that was the time I just say, okay, now I will be able to see her again and stay with her again. But when it will be time for me to go? That time was not the time to go. Question, another question? Oh, I just wanted them to know that you, you were doing baptisms here. Yes, yes. I was baptized for my, my mother and my grandmother. Okay? So um, then I didn't go with the hard copy when I went back home from the patriarch, no. They had just to send it to me, but I had a, just a soft copy. Uh, when the lady got it, she just uh, sent me a soft copy, but she was also able to send me this, the, the hard copy. It took time, but I got it. Now, I went back home just one year after the program. And when I arrived home, there was a couple from, and I was very lucky to meet them again here. They were on a mission. And Sister Van Wagner had a program to work with women. Those women spoke only Kirundi, the native language. Communication impossible. <laughs> and then when I went for the first time to church, I just saw white people. There were only two. Mm -hmm. Then I said, anyway, if they don't speak French, they speak English. I, go, I just went near them. I said, bonjour. 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 And they said, bonjour. 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 <laughs> and they said, we are sorry, we don't speak French. We oh, speak really? English. I said, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Van Wagner just hugged me. <laughs> and she said, you are an answer to my prayer. Mm -hmm. oh. She has been praying and praying to have someone to help her to communicate with those ladies, but she couldn't get one. Yes. So a lot of them don't know that you speak Kurundi in, the, in your family yes. and, and, and around. You speak French in school and all of the government. Mm -hmm. All of that in the city is all conducted in French. Yes. 
And then Swahili you have to do because there's people that come in from other countries that mm -hmm. speak Swahili. Yes. And to con communicate with countries next to you, you have to speak Swahili and Karundi, so you have to keep that up. Yeah. And English is taught as a language in the schools, but not everyone no. speaks it. They just learn it like our kids go to high school and speak mm -hmm. French or French Spanish or mm -hmm. something. Yes. So that is their fourth language. Yes, you that's speak right. Beautiful. Just so you know, so oh, they're all you. doing really well. <laughs> I, I, I majored in English. Oh, okay. I was an English teacher. Really? But I think I will not ask her to teach English in America. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sister Van Wagner then was able to have me connect her to those sisters, and they were able to work. But of course, she was not able to finish her project as they had to go up to September last year they were obliged to, to live in April. And I had to take over and continue her project. Because oh. they had to leave because? Mm. Because of the unrest that started in... Yes, very serious. Project. Yeah, I was able to take over and finish her project and give certificates. If we have time, I can give you just a video of the project being finished how I gave certificates to those ladies. So I, I was really very happy to help, to help in the project. Someone can read for me? Mm. Yes. Never let a bad situation bring out the worst in you. Choose to stay positive and be the strong person that God created you to be. Yes. I think you agree with me. Any comments? Do you really want to know? <laughs> yes. I broke, shattered my wrist. <clears throat> and it's been about three years ago. I was at church. It was my job to clean the chapel. And there was one other man there because it was Labor Day weekend and everybody in Bakersfield, California goes to the beach. So there was just the two of us doing everything. And so he says, I'll do all the vacuuming. And so then I cleaned all the bathrooms, erased all the boards, took all the trash out. I go back in the chapel and he still has four more rows of Cheerios to vacuum up. <laughs> and, and so, oh, I'll change the numbers of the hymns we're going to sing. And so I pull this stool over and I get all the numbers in order. And then instead of carefully coming down like I should have, I just took one big step and <laughs> landed on my hand. And it shattered my wrist. Anyway, he took me to the hospital and everything, and they put this metal rod in my arm. And I still can't flatten out my hand, so I still can't sew and quilt the way I'd like to be able to. And he gave me a whole bottle of pain pills. And I was living in this big house all by myself. And I figured I could just swallow that whole bottle of pills and never wake up. My mother, who had died 20 years earlier, spoke to me that night and said, don't do it. You still have things to do here on earth. She saved my life. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. I came to Cedar City because my wife <coughs> was born right around here in Canada. So there's that then the time we have to leave the country. Why did we leave the country? Yes. We left the country. First, there was this uh, unrest. 
Second, there was this uh, military coup which took place in May. Third, there were these people that the, the former militaries that we were seeing killed, jailed, tortured, and then we saw there is no place. First, I thought, I thought it was for Charles. Then I said, okay, you have to go first. Then I will stay behind. It was very difficult to convince him. He wanted me to go first. But I said, no, you are, <clears throat> you are the one to go first. And mm. he saw that he was really, he was exposed more than I was. Then he left with the two boys. And this was a plan for the people who are ruling the country today. They wanted to kill young boys and men. You know, if you eliminate the boys and the men, then that ethnic group has to disappear. They will marry those ladies, and the children that they have will belong to their ethnic, which means with the time, the process is to eliminate all these people belonging to that group. Then Charles and the boys were, were able to come straight to the US. Some days, 10 days, five and 16. But in the meantime, I saw a police officer coming to my home, bringing a warrant arrest, saying that Charles is on the list of those who are disturbing, who are doing whatever. They said, where is he? I said, he's around. <laughs> he's around. Once he comes, he will respond to your warrant arrest. But I saw that if they don't find Charles, then they will be back to me. That's why I didn't come straight here. I went to Rwanda. Mm. I went to Rwanda, and the day before my departure, I was able to call some of my friends. I told them, go into my house, take whatever you can take. Mm. <coughs> take what you can take because I'm leaving and I don't know if I will be back. So do you need a bed? Do you need a mattress? Do you need a couple to get into this house and take what you can take? And the, the miracles that I'm telling you was that in the place where Charles and the boys were, the brothers and the sisters from church were gathering everything they needed. So the movement in my home was taking place in the home where I was headed to. I could not really understand. When I arrived, I, I said, I cannot take, tell you who took what because that was not my problem. <laughs> it was just to see these things going. I didn't care and when they asked, did you, did you just give this to? I said, that was not my problem. So the same thing was happening in the State College. They were running, gathering, beds, tables, everything. That's also something that I refer to a plan, a plan that no one can tell. Only Heavenly Father. So, the time I was in Rwanda, that was my mission. No one gave it to me. <laughs> but so probably the planner, I was hosted by the, this lady, Grace. Grace, she's an amazing lady. She lost her husband in the genocide, 94. She has five children. She's been able to raise them. And she was in contact with Daniel Levitt, the daughter of David. She visited Rwanda, and she left her with the Book of Mormon, and it was in a cupboard somewhere. <laughs> she didn't throw it, she kept it. And that day I told her, let's go to, no, she first invited me 
to go to the Presbyterian church with her. I accepted. And then I said, okay, the next Sunday, you will come with me. <laughs> and then she came, she liked it. And the son, five months after, she wrote me and said, I'm going to have an interview and be baptized. <laughs> now she's a member. She's a member from, from May, from May this year. So that was also a step which helped me to come here. I just arrived on October 10th. And then that was the story of my son who was staying in Rwanda. He was able to be, to fly to Moldova, which is a, a European country. Again, by the help of David, because he has business that he has in Moldova. And we celebrated the, the end of the year in a joy, because the ranger was able to come and join us. I just, when I saw her, him, when I saw him, I asked the question, do you believe this, that we are here, all here around one table? It was a miracle. Yes. It was a miracle, I'm telling you. Judah? Yes. Politically, coming over as a refugee, was that hard to come to the States? I mean, did you have to be... You cannot say that you are a refugee. You can't come. You can't come as a refugee, no. Because you cannot have a visa. We came as visitors. Yes, the fact of... The kids came as students. As a student. The kids came as students, and we, Charles and I, came as... Visitors. And then you apply for citizenship? We will apply, we will apply. It takes, it will take time, uh -huh. but we have to apply. <coughs> Otherwise, you cannot say, say oh no, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> no visa is written as coming as a refugee. <laughs> and it was, in fact, easy for me to go to the, the U.S. Embassy in, in Burundi because I had kinds of things that I used to go to do there as I was uh, someone returning from a program that is sponsored by U the U.S. Embassy. Oh, yes, yes. It was easy for me to go. Even the, even the day, I mean, on uh, September 15, I was in the U.S. Embassy giving an interview to people who, were, who was joining the the program. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, do I say the, yes, it's, yes, it was the, I mean, the day before I left. It means it was easy for me to go to the U.S. Embassy and just ask for a visa as a visitor. Yes. Was it hard for your husband to get a visa? No, it was not. Because they saw I'm already in the system. <laughs> we come to visit the U.S. Because I was in the U.S. and I bring him to great friends that I made in the U.S. Yeah. It was easy. Yeah, that's the trick is to have a good sponsor. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. was easy. You have to have someone to come to. Yeah, that's what I wonder. Mean. Yes. I know you said on um, Sunday that your husband has been baptized and all your children. Mm -hmm. Yes, the two children, the two boys that sometimes you see. Mm -hmm. Yes, Charles. In fact, there is something that I haven't told you. Mm -hmm. Charles was ready to be baptized in April, and then the missionaries have left Burundi. Oh. Yes, because when I arrived home, he has just accepted to go with me. He was really ready to have an interview but he couldn't have someone to give him an interview so that he can be baptized. That's why when they arrived in September, they were baptized in November. So they were baptized in the U.S.? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, that's and did they baptize them too? Or? Sorry? Did they baptize them? 
David. Did David baptize all of you? Yes, they did. And so are you going to be able to stay oh, here no. in Cedar City? We want, we want to stay in Cedar City. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so David and Shalom lived in Provo, and Shalom was working at BYU. They wanted her to get a PhD, and so they sent her to Penn State. She went to get a PhD. She's just finishing it up. She'll be finished August 12th. She still has to teach. Her daughter's getting the, has her reception the 12th in Provo, and she's getting married in the Provo City Temple on the 13th. Oh, they just okay. put a daughter in the MTC a few weeks ago, and she's at this um, Salt Lake Temple Square mission. Mm -hmm. And But they are building a house in Orem, so they've rented a house, and they've sold their house, and they, they just moved this week, um, except for Shalom, because <laughs> um, she still has to finish teaching. But they, they're driving across and moving and unloading everything. So these guys couldn't stay there because they're moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we got Ranger, he got he came in uh December, in, in well, December. So, November, December. So yes. we got him in at SUU. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, who is here also took care of that and then they came and were helping them. That's yes. Mm -hmm. That's how come they're here. And so, I'm getting them in. We're very school. happy you keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so thank you so much. So, <laughs> so that more to do. Our hope is that. The storm will not last a paper. <laughs> the storm may finish. And probably one day, if the storm is over, we can go and see our friends and our siblings. So that's hope. And this is what I believe. Someone can help me and read it. Ah, oh, I can try. <laughs> Doors close regularly in our lives, and some of those closings cause genuine pain and heartache. But I do believe that where such doors close, another opens, perhaps more than one, with hope and blessings in other areas of our lives that we might not have discovered otherwise. And if there is no other comment, it's with this citation that I really appreciate your time. I appreciate the time you gave to listen to the story. And I say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. Can you teach here? Or do you have to get certified here? No, I have to be certified. It will take a long process, but I can volunteer. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can do tutoring. Yes. You said you had your patriarchal blessing. Yes. Can I ask what tribe you're from? <laughs> ah. ah, yes, I am from Israel. I was just Israel. curious. Yes. You really? Yeah, it's Israel. Right. The time oh, tribe yes. of Israel. But the, it's There's all, this sense it's all it's the house of Israel. The house she of just Israel. wants to know if it said any particular name. Of, of I the think tribes. The I think tribes. there is one which is really given. I may go back visit and then I get an answer. Yes, I'm sure I remember that there is one which is yes. named. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. 